a user by the name of Printer reached out to me on Discord to share his take on the Hilbert maze. The unique thing about his design wasn't only that the cells were 3x3, three three, but his walls were also three blocks tall. My mind was blown. And here I was thinking I was going to get back into storage tech. I needed to understand his design right away. I figured smaller was possible, but never thought it could be done with higher walls. Printer was using flying machines, and if there's one thing I really wasn't familiar with, it was slimestone. Two things if you count doors. Printer was using, from what I understand now, a pretty traditional vertical two-way flying machine. He modified the top so that it could carry the concrete powder blocks. This top line is needed to prevent the falling blocks from turning into item entities. And he added these hooks to the bottom to limit the distance it could travel. After all, they should only go up and down three blocks. He used a repeated redstone line to reset the flying machines, and an entirely separate line to generate a maze. The generation here is pretty tricky, and I didn't catch on to it right away, but the randomization is somewhat inverted. In my designs for Origin Shift and the Hilbert Maze, randomization meant opening a door to a new room. In Printer's Maze, it meant closing all the doors except for the direction that's been selected. Printer accomplished this without the use of redstone experiments by triggering dispensers with wind charges that shot upwards into trapdoors. Those trapdoors were used to update upward-facing QC'd sticky pistons with blocks attached. Downward-facing pistons were then triggered, attempting to extend into the same space. So for the direction that's selected, the piston pushing down can't be activated, but all others can. The remaining walls were then triggered to close using observers and redstone torch towers. As amazed as I was with the design, two things stood out to me. It was big. Maybe big isn't the right word. Tall, I guess? And that meant unnecessary build complexity. And I like to keep things as simple as possible. I knew there was room for improvement. It also forewent instant activation, meaning that while still fast, it wasn't fast. And this is where Printer and I spent a majority of our time. I wanted all cells to reset simultaneously, generate simultaneously, and trigger with a single input. The trigger was easy. I started by replacing the wind charges with a Redstone Experiments enabled randomizer. Wind charges would need to be replenished in survival, which isn't sustainable. And it's just easier this way. Then I reconnected a bunch of instant wires to it. The reset was a little more difficult. There's zero room in here, and it's so far away from the rest of the activation mechanism. But I remembered what I had done with skulk sensors in my Hilbert maze design. So I jammed them in and calibrated them for blocks being placed. After a couple attempts, Printer came up with a design that activated and reset at the same time. It was fast again, but it was still tall. I set my sights on trying to compact things. By far, the largest component was the flying machines. I needed to make use of some of the extra space. The tail here to stop the machines was really long. I played around with moving the stopper block inside, but realized I had space still in the corners. I was worried about different cells competing to use this block if I put it there, but turns out it's just fine, as long as you trigger the reset at the same time along one axis. This means I needed to take out the skulk sensors, but honestly, I'm fine with that. I mean, if you happen to place a block in the maze...
this alone cuts out a bunch of height. But it also means it's no longer simultaneous activation. So what if I disregarded that requirement for generation also? Well, I came up with a pretty sweet inverted randomizer. Instead of triggering pistons to compete for the same space, it triggers them to push down the whole mechanism connected by slime blocks. Only one piston can trigger. By putting gravity blocks on top of those pistons, I can then use observers to trigger the remaining walls, add a fast reset to the randomizer, and done. A compacted inverted randomizer. A few small changes to each cell to automatically generate after reset, and I think I've got something I'm satisfied with. The final design is about half the size of what Printer first sent me. It's obviously a bit slower than the one second maze, but it's still fast, and the cascading effect when you reset and generate is cool to watch. Not having instant generation is an acceptable trade-off for the reduced build complexity. The maze is still based on a space-filling curve. Again, shout out to DQWERTYC for his design. The primary mazes here are Hilbert curves in 4x4, 8x8, and 16x16. I've also included an alternate 8x8 using the Moore curve, and a 9x9 using the Wonderlic curve. Play with each of them to figure out which you prefer. You may find some generate more favorably than others. You can also design mazes with other shapes using different curves, but I'll leave that up to you. I really wanted to include a 32x32 32 32 maze, but it's just too much to set up. Like, it'll be easy for you to build these in survival using the schematics I've provided, but for me to do the initial setup is a lot. I have to paste in the generic cells with all four directions, draw out the curve below the maze, remove the directions necessary to follow the curve, remove any redundant redstone, trigger the proper walls, and I'd have to do that over a thousand times for a 32 by 32. And I'm lazy, so this is what you get for now. Thanks to Printer for sharing his design with me and working in collaboration to improve it. I'm going to take a break from mazes for a bit. Thanks again, YouTube. Have a great day.